In the name of Allah, of God, the merciful, and the compassionate, peace be upon you. It's, I am pleased to welcome Your Excellency, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken in Doha. We have had several meetings in the past few weeks, whether in Doha, Washington, and today we meet again in Doha. First, uh, I would like to inform uh, the media that we have uh, received a reply from Hamas uh, with regards to the general framework of uh, the agreement uh, with regard to hostages. The reply includes some comments, but uh, in general it is positive. However, given the sensitivity of the circumstances, we will not tackle details. We are optimistic. Uh, and we have uh, delivered the response to the Israeli party. We met today with uh, His Excellency and discussed the different developments in this uh, war, notably the unfortunate, unfortunate expansion that we have been uh, seeing and uh, their repercussions on the security and stability of the region. In the past weeks, we have witnessed different tensions uh, in addition to the war on Gaza that has expanded beyond uh, the uh, Gaza Strip uh, to reach uh, different countries such as Jordan, Lebanon, Iraq, Syria, and the Red Sea. I take advantage of this opportunity to express my condolences uh, to uh, His Excellency for the death of uh, the U.S. soldiers. We in the state of Qatar cannot uh, accept such actions and uh, we cannot accept the threatening of uh, the co coalition in the region. Since the first day of confrontations, uh, we have warned against the uh, threats and the dangers of expansion of these uh, confrontations, uh, notably that the region witness witnesses uh, long-term uh, and long-standing uh, conflicts. Unfortunately, these have become a reality, and it adds to the complexities. It uh, adds to the complexity to the negotiations. That's why we call uh, the concerned parties to uh, go back to restraint, uh, to avoid the escalation, to not uh, make any decisions that would lead to more bloodshed, to uh, maintain the safety of uh, civilians. This war has uh, so far uh, incurred uh, more than 20,000 deaths in uh, Gaza and more than 60,000 uh, injured, uh, most of whom are kids and women. Therefore, we call the international community to assume responsibility and call for a ceasefire. It is a uh, time, high time, for an international community decision to a ceasefire. I would like in this uh, context to mentioned that uh, defunding uh, the UNRWA will have uh, repercussions, catastrophic repercussions, because more than 6 million Palestinians will not receive uh, humanitarian assistance. We believe in the importance of the United Nations and the UNRWA, and we have to separate between the agency as a UN agency that has uh, strong uh, values and uh, the accusations against some of its uh, employees who are being investigated. We cannot punish a humanitarian agency uh, because of some accusations against some of its employees. Throughout the past years, uh, we have witnessed the uh, repercussions of the lack of funding and we uh, fear of of uh, the uh, complete defunding. Based on our uh, responsibility towards the Palestinian uh, brothers and sisters, we affirm that uh, Qatar will keep bringing in the people who need uh, to be uh, treated uh, in Qatar, our uh, efforts uh, have led to, uh, have led, uh, the, to the entry of uh, medications to Gaza, particularly to the uh, most affected regions and to those who are held or who are uh, still uh, stuck in the uh, Strip. Uh, and uh, thanks to His Highness' uh, decision, we have uh, sent uh, more than 2,000 tons of uh, help, including uh, the uh, needs uh, for shelter, including 
food and two uh, field hospitals. And this has uh, been successful with our partners in the UK, France, Italy, in addition to uh, the, uh, uh, the organizing committee of uh, churches. Uh, uh, around uh, 200 uh, injured uh, and patients uh, have been uh, sent uh, from uh, Gaza to uh, uh, Qatar, and that as part of our commitment to uh, provide uh, care, health care to those, in addition to 3,000 kids who have uh, become orphaned in, uh, this, uh, in Gaza because of the war. Despite uh, all the efforts to de-escalate, and after four months of the confrontations, we have all been unable to stop bloodshed, bloodshed and violence. The uh, hospitals are still being targeted, uh, schools are being uh, bombarded, and uh, refugees are being killed while uh, moving for the first uh, second and third uh, time. Your Excellency, we appreciate your uh, constant and our constant cooperation and collaboration in different fields, uh, political, uh, humanitarian, and uh, we hope that our efforts that have started four months ago to lead to a ceasefire and to uh, reach a solution that is uh, just and uh, fair for the region. I uh, seize this opportunity to thank you for all your efforts, and I thank all our uh, partners in the UN, uh, Egypt, uh, France, and other partners who are collaborating with us in different humanitarian and relief assistance to uh, reduce the uh, size of this uh, humanitarian crisis. I uh, look forward to uh, sustaining these uh, discussions between our two countries in order to reach a solution and the stability in this region, to put an end to this war, and to look forward for a better future for the region. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. And Prime Minister uh, Mohammed, thank you. Thank you for the, as always, very productive discussions that we had today, uh, this evening uh, with the Emir uh, and with the, uh, the Prime Minister as well. Uh, we've had constant engagement at the highest levels of our respective governments um, going back many, many uh, weeks, now months, um, with an intense focus on security release of hostages and getting uh, an extended pause to uh, help address the dire humanitarian situation in Gaza. And we saw the results of the last pause, the initial pause, uh, 105 hostages out, significant increase in humanitarian assistance getting in, the repair of critical infrastructure uh, in Gaza, and more broadly, reduced regional tensions at the same time. So together with Qatar uh, and Egypt, we put forward, as you know, a serious proposal that was aimed at not simply repeating the previous agreement, but expanding it. Uh, as the Prime Minister just said, Hamas responded tonight. We're reviewing that response now, uh, and I'll be discussing it with the Government of Israel tomorrow. There's still a lot of work to be done, but we continue to believe that an agreement is possible and, indeed, essential. Uh, and we will continue to work relentlessly to achieve it. Uh, we had meetings already uh, on this trip in, uh, in Riyadh, in Cairo, now today in Doha, focused on ensuring as well that we can use any pause to continue to build out plans for the day after uh, in Gaza, uh, security, humanitarian, reconstruction, governance, all bring uh, real challenges with them but that's exactly why we are and need to be focused on them now. We're also determined to use any pause to continue to pave a diplomatic path forward to a just and lasting peace and security for the region. That is the best way, the best way to ensure that October 7th and the tragic loss of life by Israelis and Palestinians is not repeated. Uh, when I was last in the region, few weeks ago, uh, I said then that there is a very powerful path uh, that we can see before us to actually get to lasting peace and security. And it's coming ever more sharply into focus. An Israel that is integrated into the region with security guarantees from its neighbors and partners, alongside a practical, 
time-bound, irreversible path to a Palestinian state living side by side in peace with Israel with the necessary security arrangements for both peoples. Uh, on this visit, one of our key objectives has been to continue to hammer out the substance and sequence of all the steps that would be necessary to enable us to move down that path. Now, that's one path. It's clear, uh, and you can see that it gets us to a destination that would benefit virtually everyone in the region and, as I said, bring lasting peace and security to Israelis and Palestinians alike. Uh, but there are those who want to move the region in a different direction and take a different path and who are actively working to sabotage every effort to move toward lasting peace and security. Just look at what we've seen in the last couple of months and indeed in the last couple of weeks. Attacks in Syria and Iraq, attacks on Israel from Lebanon, attacks on international shipping in the Red Sea, attacks in Jordan that killed three U.S. service members, and of course, the attack on Israel on October 7th. Each and every one carried out by groups trained, armed, funded, and informed by Iran. Iran and its proxies claim that they're carrying out these attacks somehow on behalf of the Palestinian people. That is absolutely wrong, and it's a cover for their true intent. Not a single one of these attacks has advanced the rights, the opportunities, the security, and the dignity of the Palestinians. They are all fundamentally about Iran's quest for power. Since October 7th, we've been very clear in warning any actor that would try to take advantage of the conflict, don't do it. We've been very clear that we do not want to see the conflict expanded. We don't want to see escalation. Uh, but we've also been clear that if our personnel, if our people are threatened, if they're attacked, we will respond. We will defend them. We are responding to violence, not initiating it. We're seeking to prevent escalation, not fuel it. And as we do this, we will continue to use every tool available to us to reach an extended pause that gets hostages out, that gets more assistance in, that brings calm to Gaza's civilians, and that keeps diplomacy moving forward toward an integrated and more secure region. In these efforts, we're very fortunate to have Qatar as a partner. Thank you. نفتح الآن المجال للأسئلة السؤال الأول من صابر أيوب تلفزيون العرب صابر أيوب من تلفزيون العربي سؤال الأول موجه لمعالي رئيس مجلس الوزراء وزير الخارجية ما هو تقييم قطر للتطورات الإقليمية التي تشهدها المنطقة ورسالتها للأطراف المعنية بهذه التطورات My second question is to the Secretary of, uh, of State, uh, Mr. Antony Blinken, why it seems too hard for the United States to end the war on Gaza, or at least to push for a ceasefire? Are you, uh, or are we going to witness uh, soon a ceasefire? Is it going to be signed here or true signed here in Qatar or agreed here in Qatar in Doha? And uh, lastly, before you travel to um, Israel and meet uh, Netanyahu, uh, I'm going to ask the same question that Politico asked today. Is Mr. Anthony Blinken too nice to be Secretary of State? Thank you. With regards to our evaluation of the regional development, we have, uh, since the beginning, had a clear position. War should end. Uh, there shouldn't be an expansion of uh, conflicts in the region. Unfortunately, we witness uh, an expansion of uh, tensions. There are some forces taking advantage and using this uh, conflict, whereas there are uh, forces that uh, seek to create uh, these uh, tensions. We 
believe and we see that the way towards uh, solution and de-escalation is uh, reaching and achieving a just and fair uh, solution for the Palestinian cause in addition to putting an end to the war on Gaza. We always call every pa all parties, concerned parties, to uh, self-restraint. We are in communication with all and we do not want to see an escalation in the region. We do not uh, want to witness uh, more uh, death in addition to what we are seeing today to, uh, uh, from challenges to the freedom of uh, navigation, which would affect not only the uh, security of the region, but trade overall. The best path forward, the most effective path forward right now to get an extended period of calm um, and to work toward an end to the conflict is through an agreement on the hostages. And that's what we're intensely focused on with our partners here in Qatar, uh, Egypt, uh, working uh, with Israel. Uh, and of course, now that we have the response from Hamas to the proposal that was put on the table uh, a week or so ago, uh, we're going to be very intensely focused on, uh, on that. And again, that offers the, the prospect of extended calm, hostages out, more assistance in. Uh, that would clearly be beneficial to everyone. Uh, and I think that offers the best path forward. But uh, there's a lot of work to be done to, uh, to achieve it. We're very focused on doing, uh, doing that work. Now, of course, as we've uh, said all along, all of this could have been over yesterday, last month, three months ago, four months ago. First of all, if Hamas had not committed the atrocities of October 7th, and second, after that, had they stopped hiding behind civilians, had they put down their weapons, um, and uh, had they uh, surrendered. But that, of course, has not happened. So the best path now is to see if we can make real this renewed hostage agreement. Um, I'll let others uh, speak to uh, my character. Um, and uh, all I can say is that uh, most people who assume the position that I have the great privilege of assuming now, uh, don't get there by being nice all the time. Hello, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, my first question is to both of you. Um, I understand there are sensitivities uh, about Hamas response, but I'm wondering, uh, Mr. Secretary, how do you plan to overcome uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's refusal to commit to a permanent ceasefire uh, after the phases of these deals? Uh, was there anything in the Hamas response that, would, that you think might change his mind? And um, Mr. Prime Minister, could you help us understand why the reply took a week? Was it communication challenges, uh, the difficulty to reach Yahya Sinwar, are you worried that the fighting would actually hamper, is actually hampering uh, the communications on this important uh, area of negotiation? And uh, one more for you, Mr. Secretary. I'm going to try to ask uh, the, a similar question that uh, my Qatari colleague asked, maybe a little less directly. Um, it's been four months into this war, and this is your fifth trip. Um, and yet the United States seems unable to meaningfully influence uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's position on some fundamental issues that you yourself advocate for. Palestinian, the creation of a Palestinian statehood, uh, how long Israel's military campaign in Gaza will last, minimizing civilian casualties. Aren't you worried that this, is, this makes America look weak and it, and it undercuts its ability to rally allies and partners in other foreign policy issues. And in that sense, what can you do differently, for example, tomorrow? Thank you. First of all, on the hostage question, uh, I, I appreciate uh, you asking the question. You'll appreciate that I'm not going to answer it because the sensitivity of this matter is such that we're just not going to get into any of the details. Uh, uh, 
all I can say is what you've heard from both me and the Prime Minister, which is that uh, we've received a response to the proposal. Um, we are studying it intensely. Uh, it's been shared with the, uh, with the Israelis. I'll pick up that conversation tomorrow in Israel uh, when I'm there, and uh, we will be working as hard as we possibly can to um, try to get a, an agreement so that we can move forward with not only a, a, a renewed but uh, an expanded agreement on hostages and all the benefits that that would bring with it. Um, virtually everything that we do in diplomacy in general and in the case of this crisis more specifically is a process. It's almost never flipping a light switch. Um, and it requires being in there with your sleeves rolled up every single day to try to make progress in all of the areas where we've been determined to make progress. And I think if you look at the, uh, the record, uh, we've seen important steps taken, significant steps taken that I would argue would not have happened without our engagement uh, and our intervention, including the provision of humanitarian assistance to begin with uh, to Gaza which was not the case in the days following October 7th. The significant expansion of that uh, assistance, uh, the efforts to open more crossing points into Gaza, the work that we're doing every single day to try to strengthen protection for civilians, our efforts as well to prevent the conflict from escalating. And despite some of the recent actions um, that have been necessary in response to violence that we've seen directed at our personnel and our people. We've been working uh, uh, effectively to do that. Um, in each and every one of these areas, um, we have achieved results that, had we not been engaged, uh, I believe would not uh, have been, uh, been achieved. But uh, in all of these areas, there is much more work to be done and in a number of places, um, we need to see, uh, as I've said before, real and clear results, not simply a change in intent, but an in change in what actually results. And I will be discussing all of that uh, when I'm in Israel tomorrow, uh, as we have throughout this, this trip. Well, uh, regarding your question about uh, why the response took too long. Of course, uh, there are a number of challenges uh, that we are facing throughout the negotiations. It's not uh, something new. And uh, what's happening on, on, uh, on the ground in Gaza, it affects the course of the negotiations all the time. And this is something that we've been highlighting in, in many occasions. Communication was representing some challenges, but also the negotiation itself, it took some time in order to get them to a place where we get uh, that response. Uh, overall, uh, as the Secretary mentioned here and we have mentioned earlier that uh, it's better not, to, it's not also for the benefit of the negotiations to uh, reveal any of the details, but the overall prospect of this looks for us at least as uh, uh, we received it, giving more promising and more prospects for for a better uh, results, we are hoping uh, for to see it and to see it yielding very soon. My questions address to His Excellency, the Prime Minister, what are the latest uh, developments in the Qatari mediation? Thank you. We tackled this uh, topic at the beginning of uh, our press conference. We have just received the response a few hours ago. We sent it uh, to the Israeli uh, side. There will be further negotiations and discussions of the details, and we 
hope that we will reach an agreement uh, the soonest possible in uh, coordination and cooperation with our partners in the United States or in Egypt. Fourth and last question, uh, Olivia Gasses, CBS. Thank you very much. Mr. Secretary, since the American retaliatory response in Iraq and Syria began on Friday, U.S. and coalition forces have been attacked at least twice, indicating deterrence is not yet established. Do you have any indication to date that Tehran will stop providing weapons to its proxies or otherwise work to constrain their behavior? And did you hear any support on this trip from your Arab partners to continue these strikes? Uh, on normalization efforts, do you believe that you now have with the Saudis something in hand that will change Prime Minister Netanyahu's declared opposition to an eventual Palestinian state? Or does a broader regional agreement require different re leadership in Israel? And Mr. Prime Minister, the U.S. has said that last week's strikes in Iraq and Syria are the beginning and not the end of its response. You called this earlier an unfortunate expansion. Do you view that the actions that the U.S. is now taking as escalatory? Uh, and if I may follow up on my colleague on the hostage deal, you mentioned positive comments from Hamas. Uh, there have been consistent reports of divisions within the group. Are you confident that this response that you've gotten is from a unified uh, consensus? Thank you. Olivia, thank you. Um, first, and I don't want to speak for, for colleagues of other countries, but I think it's, it's fair to say that um, – all of our partners are very much oppose uh, and um, reject the attacks that have been perpetrated by a variety of groups, often directed at us, but that affect everyone's interests. The Red Sea, the Houthi attacks on shipping there um, affect the interests of virtually everyone in the world given the implications that it has for, uh, for shipping that's so important to countries around the world, with 15 percent of global traffic going through uh, the Red Sea. Uh, and we've already seen the adjustments that um, shipping companies, countries have had to make in ways that's imposing added costs on consumers uh, and, and countries around the world. So that, the attacks on our personnel, uh, including the attack that killed three Americans. In Jordan, I've heard nothing but uh, condemnation of those attacks, uh, opposition to them, and determination that uh, one way or another uh, they cease. We've been, as I said, very clear from day one that anyone trying to use the conflict in Gaza as an excuse to expand uh, the conflict, to attack our personnel, to attack uh, shipping, uh, to um, engage in, in any form of escalation that spreads the conflict, uh, we would uh, strong Stanley against that. And uh, that's exactly what we're doing. We have um, been very clear that we don't want the conflict to escalate. Um, we are, we'll, we'll do everything we can to pre prevent that, excuse me, but uh, at the same time, we will defend our personnel anywhere and everywhere that they're under threat. Um, we'll see the, uh, the results, as you've heard clearly from Secretary Austin, uh, as well as from the President. Uh, the response that we've undertaken over the last few days um, is going to continue. Uh, and it's very important that not only do those engaged in these attacks get the message, but that they act on it by ceasing the um, attacks against our people and personnel. And we will uh, do what's necessary uh, until that happens. Um, second part of your question. In Saudi Arabia, I had the opportunity to discuss again with um, uh, Prince Mohammed bin Salman uh, the way forward really for the, the region as a whole. And I said a few minutes ago how there is an incredibly um, powerful path that, that lies before us.
but it's going to require everyone involved to make uh, hard decisions. Uh, none of this comes easy. But with regard specifically to normalization, um, the Crown Prince reiterated Saudi Arabia's strong interest in pursuing that. Uh, but he also made clear what uh, he had said uh, to me before, uh, which is that in order to do that, uh, two things are required. Uh, an end to the conflict in Gaza and a clear, credible, time-bound path to the establishment of the Palestinian state. So we know the immense benefits that would come for everyone concerned with Israel's further integration into the region, starting with the benefits for Israel. Um, that's something that uh, Israelis will have to decide for themselves. Uh, and again, all of this requires difficult, hard decisions made all the more challenging given the focus on the, uh, the conflict in Gaza. But these are questions that fundamentally um, our partners will have to answer, answer for themselves, uh, answer for everyone else. We can't, uh, we can't do that for them. All we can do is keep our focus on what we strongly believe is the best answer for the long-term security, the long-term peace uh, for Israel, uh, for the region, uh, as well as for the Palestinian people. And if we're able to move down that pathway, it also does something else. It isolates those who reject it, starting with Iran. And in that sense, in terms of dealing with um, some of the most profound security challenges that um, Israel faces, has faced for years, it will be in a much stronger position as part uh, of an integrated region to deal with them. But again, these are decisions that uh, will have to be made. None of them are easy. Um, and we'll continue the, uh, the effort to prepare all the diplomatic steps uh, necessary to be able to move down that path if that's the path that everyone chooses. Well, uh, regarding uh, the U.S. Uh, response, first of all, uh, as uh, I have expressed in, in many occasions, uh, Qatar reject and condemn any attack that infringes other country's sovereignty or leading to killing uh, uh, citizens. Uh, and of course, they are the U.S. citizens, but also it's part of their mission within the coalition, which is a Qatar member in. And of course, uh, we totally understand that each country has the right to uh, protect its sovereignty and its own citizen uh, with the measures they are seeing according to international law. Yet our advice to all the parties all the time that we should, uh, uh, of course, take in consideration what's happening in the region and try to avoid any skeletal measure with all our understanding uh, to the context of, of this attack. Regarding your second question uh, about uh, Hamas and, uh, the and the division in, in uh, between uh, both the inside and the outside, our dealing uh, in its entirety for for all, all over the last years has been with the political office, and uh, this channel that we are using has been always uh, giving us the responses that represent both, and that's what we have seen in the first pause and hopefully also with the, with the current uh, responses that we are having that will lead uh, to the second, uh, hopefully, pause and exchange of, uh, of hostages. I think uh, that's the only channel that we have, and that's uh, 
has been always effective for us. So we, we don't see or we don't, we are not in position to examine their unity and their division or uh, what's leading us really are the results of any agreement that we will have.